Let me ask that one more time. How's everybody doing today? You guys feeling blessed tonight? Can you guys turn me up on this mic? Yeah? You guys feeling blessed? Yeah? All right, good. Let's, let's start the night with, um, by reflecting real quick, why are we here? Like, what is this topic? I don't, um, if you guys saw the flyer, you know, the, the title, it's powerful itself. To some people, they don't like this. They don't like this topic. And I'm so glad that God chose me to give this topic because I don't sugarcoat nothing. I don't sugarcoat nothing. I didn't come here to please man. I came here to please God. And honestly, it really takes somebody that has, you know, that, that tough skin. Because it's easy to please somebody and give them what they want to hear. But I don't. I don't. I come here on a mission. On a mission to expose. So I'm going to start tonight... By saying this, Jesus spoke with these words. Matthew, chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. Other translations say, watch out. That no one deceives you or see to it that no one misleads you. Halloween. Who's excited about Halloween? <laughs> well, guess what? I'm not. Not one bit. You know why? Because there's a lot of bad things going on in Halloween. A lot. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to expose all those things that the people out there are not paying attention. So you don't want to be misled. Now, what is, what exactly is deception? What is deception to you? Deception, I believe, uh, like a false I can't really. Uh, Something false. What about you? Deception. Um, something that's not there. Something that's not there. Okay. Deception can be described as an act or, or a statement which misleads and hides the truth. Deception can be an act of statement that promotes a belief, concept, or idea. That is not true. Deception is a trick or an illusion. Deception is where you dress up something harmful as enjoyable. It's when you call sin a guilty pleasure. When the truth is, in the eyes of God, sin is sin and there is no guilty pleasure i want you to take note because jesus warned us see jesus didn't leave us these scriptures didn't leave us all of this just just for just because he's warning us be careful be careful of what these people out there that are going to try to mislead you, try to misguide you. Because Jesus warned us to take heed. We should understand that deception is meant to happen. We should expect this. It's designed and maneuvered or presented in such a way that it happens without, without you realizing it. 
That's why Jesus gives us that warning. Saying, watch out. Don't be misled. Don't be tricked. Don't be fooled of that illusion. So my first question to all of you guys tonight, and to everybody that's watching on live, who deceives? Good. I'm glad that you guys know. And for the people that do not know, can I hear a little bit louder? Who deceives? The devil. Who is it that wants you to be misled? The devil. Second of Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 and 15 says, For such people are false apostles, disciple workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. And it's not surprising that if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their actions deserve. Right now, everybody's excited for Halloween to celebrate it, to go trick-or-treating, all of these things. And there's, this is like one of the biggest controversies out there. Oh, but over here, there is, they accept it. It's okay. And then over here, they tell us it's not okay. But the scripture says it very clearly, says it real clear not to participate in these things. There's going to be people that are going to say, come on, it's just a party. Come on, you look nice on that, that Halloween costume. Come on, oh, look at that little butterfly. Que bonito, mira. So he's dressed up as the paletero. For reals. But you know what? When you choose to dress up, that instant moment that you partake, because as soon as you put that dress on, you put that costume on, you put it on your kids, you're taking a decision. It all starts with the decision to do good or bad. And when you put it on your kids, when you put it on yourself, you're giving these spirits, these demons, the devil, a pretty much a free ride, a hall pass. You already gave them. You opened the door to the spiritual realm because this is all spiritual. This is a spiritual warfare. Right now, um, there's a big war going on. Right now, as we speak, she touched abortion. I have access to the dark web. And I've seen some horrifying videos that, you know what they're doing with these babies right now? They're feeding them to kids. And this might sound strong, what I'm about to share with you guys, but it's the truth. And the truth needs to come out to the light so that you can stand firm where? In your faith. Where? In, in your walk with God. Not only they they feed him to kids, they do, they do black masses. Just exactly how we celebrate mass. But black. They do the same thing almost, but in a satanic way. They drink baby blood. They drink animal blood. They get the, 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 the Eucharist that they steal. Right now, they're stealing Eucharist. This is what's happening behind Halloween. They're stealing the Eucharist, paying top dollar. So what? So they can offend God. And the 31st. 31st. And you know what? It's crazy that the, the founder of the satanic church, which he died already, he said, the devil is happy when you guys celebrate the devil's birthday 
Uh, he, he gets pleased when you guys let your kids celebrate the, the devil's birthday, which they call it the devil's birthday on the 31st. I know that um, the Catholic Church has a, um, is it Hallow's Eve? Correct? Hallow's Eve? Hallow's, Hallow's Eve where, where, where it was all about saints. Dress up your kids as the saints, you know, remembering our saints, you know, um, and it's a beautiful thing. But honestly, is that what we see out there right now? No, we don't. People are, are more excited to go to a club. People are more excited to do it for the gram, to do it for Facebook, to see their kids, how cute they look. They're not recognizing our saints. At least I don't see it in social media. I don't see nobody excited. Why aren't we overpowering? If that was the, 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 the holiday, why aren't us as Christians sticking firmly to what it really is then? Why aren't we overpowering uh, Hallow's Eve over, over this Halloween thing? It's sad that, that out there our brothers and sisters are falling into these tricks are being lukewarm, and I'm not here to judge anybody. I'm here to wake you up. I'm here to wake you up because at the end of the day, this is real serious business. And it hurts me on a personal side because I take my faith really strong and I really do sacrifice. I do pray. I do put a lot of effort so when I see my brothers in, in, the, in the path and they're out there celebrating this stuff, it saddens me and it gets me mad. Not to the point where I'm going to beat you up, but it disappoints me. If that makes, any, it makes, it, makes it better, it disappoints me. Why? Because we should know better. We should know better. It saddens me. And then they, want, and they wonder why they call us hypocrites. It hurts me when someone says, man, you guys are hypocrites. Look at you. You think you're a Christian and you're out there trick-or-treating? You're out there dressed up? And then they throw the evidence right in your face. I got a screenshot. Imagine that. Me preaching. Me preaching. And I go to one of these parties and someone puts me on blast out there. Here's your preacher. Your loyal preacher, the one that, that, the one that is your intercessor right here at So LA, the one that raps all this godly music. Man, that hurts our image because we all make part of this image, not just me. That hurts all of us. Imagine that. And that's why it's important it really is, and it says it in, in the scripture right here. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. Take no part in the fruitless works of the darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. This is why we should go out there and not be afraid to be like, you know what? Hey, man, I know that you're trying to walk in the path. But, you know, I don't think it's right that you should celebrate Halloween. We need to speak up. Speak that light to our brothers and sisters because a lot of us are scared to even touch the subject with somebody because they're going to get offended. But guess what? If you know what's right and you don't say that, now it's your fault. The blame's on you because you know what's better. And, and you bit your tongue. And God is going to hold you accountable for that. And I don't have the right scripture on me on hand, but there is a scripture where he talks about 
you need to say the things that he, that he asks you to say. Because if you don't say them, it's on you. So tonight, I tell you guys, for those that celebrated Halloween or, or that might have thought about going to Scary Fest, uh, all these other things that are going out there, do not partake in them. Do not partake in nothing. They dress up as goblins. They dress up as Michael Myers. What does Michael Myers uh, represent? A serial killer. That way, that's what, is that what you guys want to represent? Death? That what you guys want to represent? Death? No. All these houses are scattered of blood. Man, if you guys really saw blood in real life, a dead person, I don't think you would even want candy. <laughs> you wouldn't even want candy or want to go home and sleep. My sister, it's funny. She said, why would we want to go to this place and go, go to a place to have demons or these goblins, people dressed up as, as uh, scary characters to scare us? Like, I'm, or, I'm tired of seeing them, in the, you know, in prayer. And that's true. You don't know who's out there. It's all fun and games. But you really don't know who's out there behind that mask. You don't know who's putting witchcraft. You know who's, who's wishing death upon you. Who's following you. Right now, we're on the hunt. Right now, we are on the hunt. Why? Because when the 31st comes, here comes the sacrifices. Here comes the sacrifices at night. All the, all the ugliness. How many people are being trafficked right now to be sacrificed? How many babies are being aligned right now in cages, being tortured? I saw a video, a very dark video, how they put these babies in a coffin. And they throw spiders, they throw snakes. And you can hear these babies cry. I sat there and I said... How can I watch, sit here and watch this? And I said, how do people find pleasure in watching this? For those that have those dark souls, I, I really, I just, I, it didn't add up to me. And I said, man, this world is so twisted that people do not have no clue what's really going on out there. They have no clue what really is going out there. What the war is really like. You think the devil's happy for me to tell you this? No. If you guys been paying attention to what's been going on this whole night, little defect here, little defect over there, things fall, the speakers don't want to work. Why? Like Deacon Doug said, this ain't a coincidence. Someone's mad. Someone's mad, and trust me, be, for me to get here, it was hard to get here. I drove almost over, easily two hours to get over here to give you guys this talk, to talk about this subject that no one really likes to touch. The devil is mad. Why? Because if you were partaking or you were planning into partake I know for a fact that you guys are not going to partake in it no more this was enough for you guys to listen and and hear for you guys to make a decision and if you decide to still do it then may God have mercy on you may he really have mercy on you because we need warriors we need warriors we need brave women. I see a lot of women here tonight. We need prayer warriors. We need more. We already have enough lukewarm. We already have enough of those. 
We already have enough hypocrites in our, in, in our faith, in our church. We already have enough of those. We already have fake, fake of er whatever. We have enough of those. God doesn't want no more of those. God wants soldiers, people that say, you know what, God? I'm going to take a stand today, and I'm going to choose you no matter what stone is thrown at me, no matter what, whatever comes my way. It's easy to please yourself. It really is. It really is easy to please the flesh. It's, it's like they say, it's really easy to sin. It's really easy to do the bad things, but when it costs the good things, man, it's a struggle, ain't it? I want you to think why. Why when I'm doing these bad things, when I'm in sin, when I'm celebrating Halloween, ah, oh man, I'm good. Extra candy. I get the big chocolate. I get the big snicker. Ah, uh, man, it's like with, when I was growing up, I would be like, man, let's go to the rich houses. They get some full chocolate bars over there. Why? If you ain't getting attacked, it's because he already got you where he wants you. He already has you. Why is he going to go and molest you? Why is he going to go scare you? Why is he going to go move something in your house? Why is he going to give you, make your life a, a, a live in hell? Why? He's like, man, she's already in hell. She don't even know it. She's celebrating uh, uh, hell. And she don't even know it. She's condemned. He's condemned. And he don't even know it. So why am I even going to go bother him? The devil only bothers you when you're doing something right. When you're trying to get your, your spirit right. When you're trying to go confess. When you're trying to go celebrate mass, when you're trying to pray the rosary, or tell me not, when you try to pray, pray the rosary, what happens? Two things. You get sleepy all of a sudden. You're like, man, I'm not tired. Let me, let me just do a rosary real quick. In the name of the Father, oh, man. Never mind. I'll do that tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and you say the same thing. And it feels like you ate a big old food of Chinese food. And you're just sleepy like you got food coma or something. Why is it that when you're in mass, you're disconcentrated? Why are you over there checking out homegirl? Why are you looking at her heels? I wonder where she got those. Man. And then you go ask her. Like after she, she, gets, she gets the, uh, the Eucharist. Hey, where'd you get those? Guys, why are we lusting in church? Guys, why are we looking at other people as women? Why are we even judging in church? Sometimes we're, we're over there in church judging. I don't like how that priest gives the misa, man. He makes me sleep. Oh, uh, no. You're looking at that guy over there. How he's praying. And, you, and then by the next thing you know, you don't even know the prayers. You're like, you're, where am I? You're so lost. Why is the devil attacking you? Because he's trying to steal the blessing. He's trying to trick you. That's why we need to concentrate. Like tonight, concentrate in what? Your beliefs, your faith, concentrate in the word of God. I can go here and say uh, uh, many things. But see, it's one thing when I say it, but it's another when Jesus says it. And you guys have been warned tonight. This is your, your, your most humbling, loving warning tonight because Jesus doesn't want you to go oh well no one told me I did 
And I'm pretty sure you guys' ears work tonight. May today be a day where we choose God. The world is already ugly, man. And it's only getting uglier every day. It's getting darker. We're going to walk into times that, man, where darkness is going to really hit. And you're going to wish you remember that prayer. Let me ask you something right now. What would you do if the devil presented himself in real form right now and walked in? How are you going to defend yourself? What would you do? Are you prepared? Spiritually? What would you do, honestly, if you went to your house and he walked into your house and tried to attack your family? What would you do? Because you can't, because you can't hit him. He's not a human. You guys could fight each other and stuff. He uh, uses you guys' own family, you know, the people that you love to, so that you guys can fight. Yes, he's going to use, he's going to cause conflict. But the question was, what would you do if you walked into your house? Pray. But what if you're not, not, in, not in that grace? What if you're really not preparing yourself? There's a Satanist by the name of John Ramirez, ex-warlock, ex-Satanist. He used to kill Christians for free. He said that, that the devil was his daddy. That he told the devil, go kill my dad so that I can call you my dad. The devil killed his dad, gave him all this power, authority. And he said, it's crazy because I would pray and I would talk to the devil from 7 at night to 7 in the morning, planning how to, how to take you guys down. And look at you guys. You guys can't even pray one hour or go to church for one hour. And I was just like, man, that's crazy. That hit home too. Because everything that I'm speaking goes to me too. So due to time, we're going to run it short. And we're going to go into prayer. But I invite you tonight, for reals, to take a stand, to really make God a promise. God needs you out here. He needs those foot soldiers because there's people going to hell right now. There's people that are going to go to hell because we didn't decide to give the message. There's people that are going to take bad decisions, make bad decisions if we don't stand up. I put myself, and I think of all those youngsters that I go visit at their houses. I do, I do, I do house calls. And I tell myself, I do the work that no one likes to do. Because no one takes the time to go listen to a youngster and sit down and help them get out of these drugs. God has put me in a, in a path to save and if you're here tonight it's because he wants to use you to save too he wants you to be the light light and darkness deacon doug is gonna lead us into prayer but i want you guys to stand up put everything that you have in your hands put it down and think of those times that you did celebrate Halloween.